used to look up to you. Take a big bastard hammer and nail your fucking... Apologise to him. It ends today. I'm going live in five, four, three, two, one. It's me, Dave. You're inside me head, mate. Or maybe I'm inside yours, it's hard to say. Not important, though. What is important is that this is the best fucking DLC you've ever played. Live and spooky, dead and pukey. Time loop, <laughs> brewers droop more like. This is the one, mate. It's going to be the real deal. It's going to be a roller coaster, all fucking expenses paid, uber bastard. And best of all, you get to play as me or with me or something. So fucking strap in, mate, because we are going to fuck shit. Oh, fucking hell, it's Bozeman. Hang on, mate. Hello, Dave. Hello, Bozeman. Thank you for agreeing to stay late tonight and run this light entertainment piece. You didn't really give me any choice, mate. No, I didn't. What's this button do? President C. Excellent. We should get one of these for the news. Never going to happen. It lights up when it's time to press. Simple. And what's this big machine here? That calls the guests to the stage. Well, that sounds like fun. It's automated. Just leave it alone. Boring. One more thing. There's no adverts in the show, but we will need you to use the advert buttons to play in a little bit of archive footage. They're automatically loaded for you, so you just hit A, B, or C at each break. How do I know what's on what? Look to your right and select the fax paper. OK, so the top three are all clips from just the job in the 70s. Second clips are all PT from the 80s. And we just pick A, B or C when the advert buttons flash. Symbol. Show starting soon. Good luck. Try not to fuck it up, Dave. I'm going to take the microphone out of that fucking phone. Right, best DLC ever. Here we fucking go. Hamilton man, which forced this year's early election. That's... The night visitor at 9.30, poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue, it's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in Live and Spooky. And tonight... They'll be asking if the old brewery and ask Yeah, I realise that, Eric, but my therapist has made it clear that I perform best when we have a plan and we stick to it. So I suggest you don't make any last-minute changes, as it's my intention to stick to our pre-arranged script. Is that all right with you, Eric? Actually, I don't care. I'm a leaf in the wind. And as we're going out live, there's really sweet fuck all you can... Yep, standing by. Good evening. I'm Eamon Tightly. Good evening. Behind me is a true TV legend. Now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man, Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's been brought here tonight to film a special reunion episode of Just the Job. But as always, viewers, you know better. 10 seconds, places. It's time. Let's start the show. Going in five, four, three, You're feeling hopeless and you just can't work things out I've got just the job When there's too much water for a little tiny spout I've got just the job This is where you're sat one sorry Good evening, friends. 
And yes, it's true, and I can't really believe it myself. We are back for this special one-off reunion episode of Just the Job. I'll get it. Save you having a look away. My DLC, my rules. Hey, dude. It's Eric. Just wanted to say break your leg. And look after our little show. Of course, mate. No worries. You're 100% safe with me. It pretty much runs itself, to be fair. Just cut the guests on and off. And, well, it's a family show. So keep that bleep finger at the ready. Oh, don't you worry, mate. My finger's always ready. That's a vaguely threatening. Oh, got to go. Stand by, Eamon. Look. At the mighty and bevel. go, Eamon. Because you would be right yeah. there. Bye. Oh, it's you. Yeah, it certainly is me. <laughs> Yo, fuck at you, naughty, naughty, fuck you. Frank, did you know? But look at that face. <laughs> yeah, I fucking did, didn't you? Peter. Fuckers, a lot of you. Peter, you thought you were here tonight to record a special reunion episode of Just the Job? I can't believe it. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the Peter bits Clement, of your life. <laughs> Come on. Let's get you back to the studio, thank you. Emma, I can't bloody it. Those fucking gats have never been all the way along. They knew. They're all part of this way, Peter. Mind just step there now. I can't believe it. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of your show. I think it's incredible. I, I, I never believe that people didn't know. He's loving this, yours. I didn't, I didn't believe Here it. Here we go. I'm right in there, Peter. I am absolutely bloody flabbergasted. <laughs> oh, I mean, I haven't been in this speech since I was about three fucking years old. Oh, yeah. lovely family show, Peter. Yeah, well, they know what I'm like, <laughs> mate, don't they? There we go. Lovely. Hello, darling. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you. Thank Peter you very Clement much running for Prime Minister. Of course, I can have your vote. So, Eamon, how long have you been uh, planning this, Eamon? Eamon, how long have you been planning, Eamon? Eamon? Peter Gordon Clement. You were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering to Fanny and Martin Clement. Christ, was it that long ago? We didn't have much back then, but where there's lad, there's lube, as they say at the butchers. That's right. They got up at the crack of dawn to make the journey down to the capital by coach. It's your infamous old man and her long-suffering husband, ladies and gentlemen, Fanny and Martin Clement. Lovely to have you both here. So, Lovely tell me, what was life here. like for young Peter in the what Clement house? It was the same as every other house. Now, special about it. Even back then, you could tell our Peter were bound for an audience. He used to make up little plays and make us all gather round and watch them. Do you remember, Martin? Aye, bloody long they were. But if you got a pretty chuff, you should wave it in the fellas' faces, as they say down the pits. And our P.D. were always waving his chuff about. <laughs> After all, if you weren't going to have it stuffed, you, you shouldn't have had it true. <laughs> Clement there with the first bits of your life. <laughs> it's 1938 and you're a 15 year old at Rothering Elementary, but already you've got Quite the reputation oh, as a ladies' man. Oh, Jesus, you haven't got Jan Sandwich here, have you? Oh, Jesus, you Even better. Sandwich, Who's this? I remember you slipping me tongue and giggle round back of your nan's house. Oh, you reckoned it were your first kiss, but me, I could tell it would. Mind you, it turns out you said that to all girls, but we loved you anyways, because you were a charming man. Well, Christ, it could be any one of them. 
Is it, it could be anyone Patty one. Cakes? It's, it's your childhood cakes? sweetheart, your Chelsea childhood. Bones! <laughs> Cracking, that's my type of girl. Let me. Let me. Yes. I'll take that one. Chelsea. Oh, God. Oh, Hello, pets. Hey. Oh, look at you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you take a seat? Yeah, is that all right? Yeah. Oh, and we're in. So, Chelsea, let me ask you this. So, Chelsea, what do you think we could see in this. young Peter what way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring household Prime Minister? Oh, well, that's easy, Pet. You see, our Peter here, he always, always had a, a surprise up his sleeve. So, do you know what he did after our first date? No, of course you don't, so I'll tell you. That first date, he smuggled me back into school where we used to go to. I hadn't been back there since I'd left, but somehow, I don't know why I found it a surprise, but he'd gotten hold of Master Key and he'd made this lovely little nook under school stage and there were cushions and a, a sleeping bag and all these candles and a... No, weren't what you lot are thinking with your gutter mind. No, because he were a perfect gent. He kissed me. By it, did he kiss me? But he never pushed his look. No. Do you know what he did? No. I'll tell you. Do you know what he did? Kid you not, he read to me from a book that he nicked out school library. Of course, Chelsea. He kissed me. He read to me. And then he walked me home, cos he was a class act then, and he's a class act now. Oh, bless you, Pet. Do you remember what the book were? Aye, I do. And I also remember that thing, what you do with your hands. Steady, now, you'll get me into trouble when this is safe. Chelsea Bonds, everybody! Yeah, you can go. Oh, yeah. Hey, chicken! <laughs> I will see you in green room. Not if I see you first. Don't even know what a bloody green room now, is. Now, before we bring our next guest on, let's have a look at some classic Just the Job. It's on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to watch. It's on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to watch. And that's about two minutes. I'll take a look at that monitor. I can't see a thing without my glasses. There's so many of them. I do remember this one time. It was the height of our second run. By this time, we knew each other way too well. Anyway, Everything OK? I remember this one, LJ Salt for a week. Well, Good choice, Eric! Okay, <laughs> Not my choice, if I'm honest. Can we reset, please? Oh, we didn't get you into too much trouble with the folks on Kids TV. Popstar Skinny, whose new single, Dimples on My Cheeks, comes out on Friday. And, of course, you, our wonderful viewing audience, without whom we would just be two men ageing disgracefully in a large shed. See you next week. Before we go, sorry, PC, thought somebody would have told you, there is someone else we need to thank today. OK, and who might that be, LJ? Someone who's been with us right from the very start, PC, through thick and thin. Me, ma'am. <laughs> Actually, it's his birthday. Would it be somebody whose birthday it is today? Yeah, and it's his birthday today. Frank, come on over here. We've got you something. Come on up here, Frank. Come on. This is Frank, our long-suffering floor manager. And I'm not ashamed to say that I love this man. We all do. So we've had a bit of a whip round. No, we haven't. And we've all clubbed together. And we have got you this. Well, I bought it, actually. Oh, lummy, what a beauty. Look at the detail on that icing. Look at all these miniature marzipan figurines. It's, it's so intricate. Well, it's from that place in Frampton Square. They're famous for it. And I know you collect miniatures, so uh, it seemed right somehow. Gosh. Thanks. It's going great, I think. That's Everything's really smooth, according really to plan. Really yeah, well, he's been in the game for years. Mm. I used to work so with him on Peter, you know. Lovely guy. I was a runner for Dorothy Hammerman. She scared the shit out of me. I loved him, though. He was backstage. Yep, saw her in the corridor. Hopefully she didn't see me. You hiding from one of the guests, Eric? Ten seconds, everybody. It still makes me laugh to this day. Yeah, all right. Of she scares me a bit. It wasn't that funny in the end. Going in five, four, three. And I'm pretty badly allergic, so... 
Fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across so many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. Tomia! Mia! That's right, a man who needs no introduction, but we're going to give him one anyway. Your sidekick for almost 13 years, little Jimmy Chisholm! <laughs> Fuck me, they put him back in his old outfit. What a prick. I got our gym now, mostly. Lovely. Ah, together again, eh, lads? This has got to be bringing back some memories, eh? Oh, it certainly does. Not all of them good ones, eh, Pete? Ah, oh, we had our moments, LJ. I'll give you that. <laughs> well, Jimmy, you're certainly in a position to give us a unique insight into this bit of Peter's life. What are the differences, would you say, between the on-screen and the off-screen versions of Peter Clement. Well, you know, Eamon, there's really not that big a difference. I mean, Pete's not pretending to be anything. He is what he is, and what he is is a massive... Steady now. Prankster. He said prankster, not wanker, in case you didn't get it. I've lost n count of the number of pranks he's pulled on me over the years, both on and off screen. Actually, we've got a little bit of footage here which shows us exactly what you're talking about. Let's roll it there. And let's get those nails in good and tight, shall we, little Jimmy? Sure thing, Pete. Tool me up! Here you go, pal. Make sure you hit it good and hard. Make sure you hit it good and hard. Jimmy, what have you done to yourself now? <laughs> God, I remember that when we sabotaged the hammer. It took us three hours to set that one up. Yeah, and about six weeks before I could walk without crutches. Oh, God, those crutches, they were always getting in the way. Were they? Last none of the old spark, eh, boys? Well, that's the last footage you find of me wearing sandals. I mean, my feet are grotesque now. Children get upset. <laughs> <laughs> Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody! It's Jimmy. Never mind. Keep up. In 1941, long before Just the Job ever aired, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was there, on those very battlefields, that the strangest of friendships was born. They asked me to say something about you. This is what I write. Only ten words. Big man. Tiny penis. Shitty gopher. Once saved my life. It's your friend of over 40 years, the current Irkistanian ambassador to the capital, Ivan Vadovich! Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Come here, you prick! The horrible bastard! <laughs> oh. Oh, this Irkistanian special reserve. The guys at Labour Camps drink it to keep ice out of their lungs. Uh, here, it put them, um, how you say, here on your balls. It's chest, mate. Yeah, it should be balls. Here, up your bottom. And also, up yours. <coughs> uh, thank you. All right. Thank you. So, tell us. Uh, what's it like being friends with Peter Clement? Jesus Christ, you can clean grout him with that! Peter Clement, very annoying man. He drink too little and talk too much. But in time of crisis, he's no one better to have by your side. Also on golf course, where he make you look good with his terrible stroke. There's nothing wrong with my stroke, uh, You stand like man trying to find his tiny penis. Oh, oh no! Where is penis? Oh, no. oh, is Where this it? No, it's blade of grass. It's too big for penis. You want to watch it, pal? If I win this election, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, if you win this election, I shave off all my hair. I'll take that bet. <laughs> Ivan Vanovich, everybody! <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, I'll see you after the show, yes, sir. We found this bottle. Yeah, good idea, Phil. I've been meaning to clear the paint off that garage for a while now. You win so the Stanley Gloria Special Reserve. Be careful you not start another war, my friend. Never again. Never, ever again. And that is a Peter Clement promise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interesting, man. It wasn't just the job that the nation took the to their hearts. The Starting in 1977 and running for nearly seven years, you brought your inimitable Peter Clement style to your eponymously named late night chat show, Petey. I fucking love that bloke. Let's take a look at the clip now. Let's take a look at the clip now. And that's about two minutes. Same monitor as before. Absolutely. Suppose you saw that. Classic television. I'm looking in the script here, Eric, but I can't seem to find it. Find what? No, I can't seem to find where it says, pour two shots of vodka on Eamon's chair. Right, I'll get it. Debbie, can we... Doesn't bother me. I'm a leaf in the wind, even if the guests aren't. Right, you are. And became a rising star in church circles instead. Peter's always been a fan of his and the socialites. They'd always regretted not meeting him. It was supposed to just be an interview. But an hour before the show, Peter and... Penny Forum. If you were a pop star, Eric, mm. a genuine cocaine groupies on the tour bus level pop star, mm. would you give it all up to be a priest? <sighs> oh, I don't know. It's probably as crazy as giving up a five-night-a-week chat show to become a politician. Ha! <laughs> I'll drink to that. Hey. Oh, no thanks. I still need my job. Can we reset, please? Back then, you agreed to go on just the job to do a little thing called I'll drink to that. Do you remember that? Yes, I saw the first two, and I remember feeling very strongly this was something that might come back to haunt me. Well, you're not wrong about that. Play the jingle! <laughs> Right, Archbishop, it's a very simple game. I'm going to read out a series of statements to you. If you agree with them, you shout out, I'll drink to that, and you down one of these glasses of holy vodka that we've laid out for you. You know, I've not seen an array like this since the socialites played in San Palmarino. <laughs> <laughs> now, for legal reasons, can you confirm that you're doing this of your own free will and that we're not blackmailing you or coercing you in any way? Not coercing, no, more like ambushing, but I've never been one to turn down a challenge, and after all, our good lord even enjoyed a tipple from time to time. The church isn't all jumble sales and child abuse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play! <laughs> Cats are better than dogs. That clearly you've not met my poodle Beelzebub. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Alright. Coffee is better than tea. That, that's clearly heresy. <laughs> we will get you. <laughs> Billy Bob Jean Ch you know what that is, do you? I'd be rather fond of country music these days. That, gosh, that's broken a few hearts amongst our old fans, I'd imagine. <laughs> Billy Bob Jean Short's hit song, Do What I Say or Go Back to the Basement, is better than Graham Bannon's classic hit from the 50s, If You Won't Be My Lady, Lady. Better than Graham Bannon. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Yeah! I can't believe you actually took it. <laughs> End of the game. Why fronts are better than boxer shorts? I'll drink to that. Fantastic. <laughs> We're learning a lot here. Mm. <laughs> a bacon sandwich is better than fish and chips. Oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, sauce on the sandwich. If you like. I'll drink to that. Girls are better than boys. Mm. A bloody drink to that. Language, <laughs> Archbishop. <laughs> Charity is better than thrift. Nah, that's a bit theosophic. Theos <laughs> that's, that's a bit deep. <laughs> the, the, the shot goes straight to my head, you know. <laughs> I can see that. He obviously thought that you were going to be sober at this point. Well, you can take the boy out the social life, but you can't take the archbishop out of the boy. <laughs> no, wait, um... No, wait, that doesn't sound good. God is better than all of us. Of course he is. He's fucking great! Well, I'll drink to that! I'll drink to that! I'm going to have a bucket somewhere. <laughs> You'd think getting smashed on live television would have ruined the archbishop's career. But it actually did the opposite. Eric! He's more popular than ever now. And of course he presents... Anyone seen Eric? Eric! He's not here, mate. Is the most Don't talk good. Religious television what? Show in history. And all because of a few shots. I can't hear what you're saying, man! For God's sake, in three, in case, two... It was through me. <clears> dodgy <throat> Unforgettable stuff.
But while you took all the credit, arguably, someone else did all the work, didn't they now? Peter Clement to the set, please. Unless you've already surrendered your bollocks at the front desk. Jesus, Horatio. Jim Smasher, Christ. No way. Yeah, it's your producer for over seven years. Now the chief executive of Channel 3 and one of the ten most influential women in media for the third successive year with the fifth bits of your life, ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy Hunt. Congratulations on the new job, Dotty. You deserve every bit of it. Yes, and good luck with yours. Well, I haven't got it yet. Of course you do, darling. Well, I haven't got it yet. <laughs> <laughs> You were his producer on PT for over seven years. What's your favourite memory from that show? Oh, well, there have been so many, but uh, I think, yes, every evening on the half before the show, we would meet at the side of the stage for our little ritual. Well, I persuaded her it was a northern ritual, but the real truth of the matter is it was just something that me and Sid used to do before the war. We'd have a toast like this. Here's one finger for the north, and two, two fingers, fingers to, to the, the south, and, and we, we can all, all apologise tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the secret of our six and years at the top, Eamon. <laughs> Dorothy Hammerman, everyone! You're waiting here, darling. Thanks for coming. I wouldn't want to live in a world without this beauty. And so, to last year, when you surprised the entire country by announcing you were giving it all up to form a new political party, and because the final bits of your life is always about the future... Oh, Peter, what have we let ourselves in for? Your co-founder in advance, and possibly the next Prime Minister, Miss Julia Salisbury. Lovely to be here. Um, I grew up watching uh, bits of your life as a child. It's about time you got round to Peter. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time out from your campaign to come and speak to us. Let me ask you this. Is Peter Clement really a good fit for politics? Careful, love. It's a bloody trap. Well, he's not what you'd conventionally think of as a politician. Uh, Huntleton demonstrated his uh, colourful vocabulary and, and he's partial to a tipple from time to time. Well, it is true, like to hold me town halls in public houses. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but haven't we had enough of those perfect politicians with their impeccable lives, with no character flaws, because they have no character at all? Surely after Hamilton Mann and his perfect veneer of respectability, we're starting to see that there is perhaps something dark behind the mask of privilege. Hey, no speeches from you. You're supposed to be talking about me. Peter doesn't wear a mask. What you see is what you get. You might not always agree with what he says, but you'll always know what he thinks. Because he's honest. And he keeps me honest. And I think, in the end, that's what's so amazing about Peter Clement. He makes us all a bit more honest. Fantastic. Well, viewers coming up, we've got a little bit of a treat well, for you. But before then, let's take a look at the current Peter Clement. Now, this is you, last week in the debate. And viewers, if this is anything to go by, the future's looking pretty bright. I think we have ably demonstrated these past seven years that we are truly the party of commerce. Well, then why does the Business Enterprise Foundation support our fully costed manifesto, eh? Your, Tell me that. Your party can't be trusted with the economy. 
or we have moderate plans for steady growth. Oh, listen to the pair of you competing for your master's approval. You're the party of economic stability. You're the party of business. So, who is left for the rest of us? You're hardly a poor man with your TV career. No, not now, no. But I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth like you, Mr Hamilton man, or went to private school and then university like you, Mr McNair. But you know what that does give me? No, oh, please don't say the common touch. It gives me a bit of fucking perspective. It gives me a bit of perspective. Please, control your language, Mr sorry, Hamilton. Uh, control your... Actually, no, you know what, I, I am not sorry Actually, if the language that I use, sorry. the language of the ordinary people, is considered to be, oh, I don't know, unsuitable considered or offensive, because it is just a word. Just Whereas these two, these two will fuck up your life for a crumb off Remington's Vist's table, but... They will use all the right words when, when you make a sound it. like yobbos. You are yobbos. You come in loud, you kick the country in the face, you nick all of our stuff to sell to your rich mates, and then you pat us on the head and expect us to be grateful for the doggy treat. Unfortunately, it'll take more than earthy rhetoric to balance the books. What the electorate want is a strong economy. What the electorate want is to be heard. Well, in just five short weeks, we'll find out if those words hold true. But for tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. Take it away, boys! When you're sitting listless in a dull and lifeless room, I've got you. Just a job. When you need a friend to come and blow away the gloom, I've got you. Goes to show what I always say, Eric. If you want good, wholesome family entertainment, stick to the script. Do you feel like every month costs more? What the fuck? Is that it? No, 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 no. This ain't right. And finding that we have.